Hey guys, hello and welcome or welcome back to another episode of the Portugal Travel Series. It's about 4.30 p.m. starting the vlog rather late today. Just had a nice lunch at a Chinese restaurant. I found the herbal tea I used to eat, drink in uh, Hong Kong. And I, there was also a bao that was uh, so-so, custard bao. But it reminded me of the good old uh, yum cha days in Hong Kong. Uh, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, walking past another new square, it's called Mate Muniz. It's my first time here. I was supposed to be here last night as well, but the bus never arrived. I waited for like 45 minutes. And then I took a metro and then ended up in Rossio Square again. So the plan for today is to go swimming in the Atlantic, for which I'm headed to Kashkesh. Uh, it's a town about 30-40 minutes away from here. And then the second thing on the agenda is very special and very close to my heart. Uh, but <laughs> if it happened, you would have seen it in the thumbnail and the title already. Well, if it didn't, it didn't. Let's see how it goes. But off to the first destination, so headed to the train station first and then I'll tell you more when we get there. adventures don't seem to be ending anytime soon I was told there is a strike because of which this train that was supposed to leave at 4 actually left at 5 30 um, luckily I was still out there at the Chinese restaurant eating lunch so I skipped part of the waiting time but anyways I lost quite a bit of time so I stopped over at Cacabelos I don't know how to pronounce this right but anyways there is a small beach about a kilometer or so away from the train station and this is also the place where I'm meeting someone at 7 p.m. so that gives me just about enough time to swim and you know enjoy uh, and rest a bit before meeting them uh, because I could have gone all the way to the last station as was originally planned but then I'll have no time to swim so I changed the plan and stopped here and so Kashkesh the original plan was actually a fishing town converted to a resort town now and it's mostly famous for beaches and surfing the waves are amazing there um, so I was going there essentially to just swim, there was nothing else to see or do. But then I realized that if I go there all the way, I still could, but that would significantly reduce the amount of time I had to swim. So instead I thought might as well go here and swim instead. Um, and anyways, there was no space to sit down on the train. So they kind of, everybody who wanted to leave earlier had to wait until 5.20, 5.30 something. So there's like a whole backlog of tourists waiting on this train so it's pretty cramped and stuffy so instead of spending my time time standing i decided to just come here and spend my time swimming instead the Atlantic and behind me you can see there are like so many people so just have to find like a sweet spot to drop my stuff and then jump in the water I guess the water is gonna be really cold so I'm just gonna run for it but really excited to be able to swim again after. had a really lovely swim there is also an area with the uh, lounge chairs and benches and stuff which you can i think you'd have to purchase belongs to a restaurant so there is also like the sandy beach is free for everyone find a spot drop your stuff and go out for a swim the water was really cold as i predicted but it just took me a couple of seconds and i went straight for it uh, it was a very refreshing swim now it's time to sweat it all out so um, the person that i'm meeting is actually a trainer of uh, portuguese martial art called jogo do pau 
and for those of you who don't know i have been a martial artist since the early age of six um, uh, there have been some intermittent breaks in the middle because of career changes and movement across countries etc but uh, off and on i've been practicing since the age of six and mostly i've been focused on taekwondo uh, which focuses on kicks so lower body exercises but this is more of like a stick fighting so it's a traditional portuguese martial arts and it's a very non-touristy thing to do but it, since i'm very passionate about it so i reached out to them and i'll be doing a lesson with them to get the hang of what it is and how the training looks like and so on so i'll be meeting him in a couple of minutes and then we'll be heading to the training center so stay tuned and this was the second thing i was uh, hoping to happen and that was very close to my heart so let's see how the training goes all right so i made it to the training center meet my trainer i'm gonna be learning about uh, Jogo de Pau, which you can see here on this nice little t-shirt. It's a uh, staff fighting. So let's get to know the trainer and more about the martial arts. Please introduce yourself. Well, my name is Ricardo. I'm Ricardo Mora. I'm the main coach here in Cascais. Uh, we started the school uh, like nine years ago. Uh -huh. And well, all the, the guys that practice here started with me. Okay. Uh, I've been in martial arts since as a kid, nice. four years old or something, uh -huh. but uh, in Jogupao only uh, 15 years or something. Okay, and could you tell us about the staff that you're holding? I guess Jogupao is mostly staff fighting, right? So you, yes. this is your main weapon. Uh, wooden staff. Uh -huh. uh, this is a Portuguese uh, traditional wood. Uh, we can use several. This is Lodon, Lodon Bastard. Uh -huh. I, I don't know the English uh, translation. Okay. Um, um, it's the, it's a, a wood that was used for uh, animal traction vehicles. Okay. It's, it's very resistant, also flexible, so we can actually hit each other. Uh -huh. uh, and it, resi and it, it withstands a good defense. Right. Um, we can use also other types of wood like um, walnut. Okay. Uh, the idea is they're not very uh, rigid. Yeah. Because the more rigid, the more uh, vibrations and it passes to the. Right, right. Part. So it's a uh, one and a half meter. Okay. Uh, we also have batons, uh, which are like uh, walking canes. Okay. About uh, 85 centimeters or something. Right. So I guess I'm not walking home tonight with bruises, right? They seem pretty comfortable. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see, but not so, no. Okay. But no, the, we actually practice uh, always hitting the, the, the body. Right. Uh, there are no short attacks. Every, every attack must be at body reach. Okay. Um, so we can actually practice a, a good defense. Right. Because if someone just swinging the, the stick yeah. stuff in front of you and yeah, you're yeah. not in danger, so you're not offending you. Might, okay. You might think you are, but you're not. Okay. Uh, so we actually practice. When we attack, we try to hit the opponent's body. Yeah. And we teach him how to defend. Okay. Today, yeah. we are going to use some safety measures. Sure. Uh, it's not just you, it's everyone yeah, yeah, that yeah. starts. Yeah. We increase the distance a little. Okay. So when you are attacked, you also move back. Right. You, you gain a little distance that if you fail the defense, right. you're not there to get you. Okay, sure. For, uh, when we start having the, the defenses more uh, learned, yeah, yeah. Um, then we start shortening the distance. Okay. And then you can actually move forward when you defend. Right. Fair enough. All right, so I'm really excited to learn with Ricardo today. It's my first time trying out this Portuguese martial art. I'm still in beachwear, so I'm going to go quickly change into sportswear and let's begin the training.
more time. Okay. Same motion? Yeah. Had a super fun one and a half hour training session with Ricardo. That's the staff that I had. Uh, was really cool. You can be in the video too. <laughs> oh. Wrong side. <laughs> this way. <laughs> you can be in the video too. Um, yeah, that's uh, Antonio. Cheers. And this is another of the Paul. classmates, Paul. Uh, these, we were having a lot of fun training. Ricardo was a very patient trainer. He was telling me all the technicalities and uh, physics behind moving the staff and, and how to defend yourself. And just like Taekwondo, this martial art also is all about timing and defense. That's the, the main lesson that I learned today. Um, also the distance, right? Yeah. So defense is paramount and you have to properly maintain your timing and um, the distance. Um, all right. Thanks so much, Ricardo, for My the pleasure. awesome one and a half hour lesson during the <laughs> summer scorching heat. Uh, I'm totally <laughs> melting, so I should go back to the Atlantic and swim again maybe one more time. <laughs> but it was a really fun experience, really unique. Uh, I never imagined I would have done this without uh, your support. So thanks so much. And also to you guys, Good you made training a lot of fun. Uh, with that, I'm ending this episode here. I hope you like this and I'll see you again in the next episode. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>